Mr. Speaker, under the, under the previous federal government, Port Alberta and the Calgary Region Inland Port were designated as foreign trade zones. By positioning these two cities as major international trade hubs, we can attract and leverage significant capital investment while allowing potential international partners faster and more efficient access to Western Canada. To the Minister of Economic Development, preserving foreign trade zone status is integral to Alberta's competitiveness on the global stage, allowing greater opportunities for economic diversification. Given this announcement is less than one year old, have you received a firm commitment from your federal counterpart on Edmonton and Calgary FTZ status? Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. State. Speaker. No, thank you, Honourable Member, for the question. Uh, a very good question at that. Uh, I am uh, having dialogue and conversations with the, with the federal government. Uh, at this point in time, to answer uh, his question directly, no, I have not heard back yet. But I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that uh, trade is very, very critical. Uh, not only to Alberta, but also to our country and, and to our government. We take it very seriously. That's why, Mr. Speaker, I recently returned from a trade mission from China and Korea, where we are looking at opportunities to leverage our successes, and we had uh, a number of concrete, uh, tangible outcomes that I'm happy to talk about momentarily. First supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that the aforementioned authorities, Port Alberta and Calgary Region, are noted exports, uh, experts in attracting and sustaining international investment and trade, and given that their initiatives and strategies are integral to building the relationships we need to access global markets for a variety of our products, including oil, again to the Minister, are you working with these authorities to develop an Alberta-wide plan, part of our engage engagement strategy, which seeks to leverage the strengths of both groups to maximize Alberta's competitiveness in the global economy? Honourable Minister. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'll thank the member for the question and, and remind the House that, again, uh, you know, market access is a, is a key priority for our government. This is why uh, our Premier, our government, created this Ministry of Economic Development and Trade to have a focus on, uh, on working with the private sector, the job creators, but also looking at opportunities to increase uh, our trade opportunities, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we will continue to do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll take that that means you are meeting with those uh, organizations. Given that the Minister was recently in China and Korea for 14 days, and given that these are very, uh, the very destinations which we need to market and sell these two ports to, again to the Minister, during your trip to Asia, did you mention these two entities and their status as foreign trade zones, and did you seek feedback on how your government can assist in making Alberta even more attractive as a place for international business community investment? Honourable Minister. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and, uh, and again, I'll thank the member for the question, and, and trade is absolutely critical and, uh, and a, a high priority for our government. Uh, I can tell the House, Mr. Speaker, that, uh, quite frankly, this uh, trade mission to China and Korea uh, was my first trade mission outside of North America and was uh, very intentional on going to our second and fifth largest trading partners uh, for the province of Alberta. We recognize that there are incredible opportunities to increase trade, whether we're talking about agriculture and agri-foods agri products, forestry, uh, looking at uh, our energy uh, sector, as well as looking for opportunities to leverage uh, tourism. And quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, uh, we were quite happy and I was proud of the culture minister for announcing the new...